everyone. Welcome back. It's Sound Guy Barry. I'm here to share some tips with you on this episode about how I manage festival type shows. And by a festival show, what I mean is those shows where you have multiple bands on stage through the afternoon or through the evening. So I might have two, three, five bands, one playing right after another. And it's critical that we get one act off the stage and the next one onto the stage in a smooth and efficient manner that doesn't make the audience wait too long and gives each of the acts the maximum amount of playing time that we can squeeze in there. I've come up with a number of things that I do to try to make this process go a little easier. And these are some of my most fun shows but if they're not managed well, they can also be some of the most stressful and chaotic shows. And so I try to minimize that to the greatest extent possible. So the first thing that I do is I try to work with a stage provider. Now, sometimes I'm providing the stage, sometimes the venue is, but I try to get in touch with the people who are providing the stage in order to get the right kind of setup for our event. Now, oftentimes the stage is provided and we just have to deal with whatever we're provided with. But if I have a choice, I'll talk to the stage provider and ask them for a stage that is extra deep and that has stairs on both sides. So like this. Okay, so when we specify the stage, we wanna ask for a stage that is extra deep and has stairs on both left and right sides of the stage. And we want it deep enough that we can hang a curtain so we can reserve about one third of the back of the stage so that the upcoming band who will be playing next can get their back line set up more or less in place. So when the first band finishes playing, they can just move their gear off the stage and the next band can just move their gear through the curtain into place rapidly. And so that'll make our switchovers a lot faster. Also, when setting up the stage, I want to set up a power feed across the front for everybody, and a power feed across the back for the back line. So this way, people can have their uh, guitar effects and whatnot plugged into the front outlets and they have power for the back, and we don't have a bunch of cabling that is going back and forth across the stage. It keeps things real neat and simple and easy for everybody. Then I'll try to get the bands together, and we'll have a little talk about what's expected during the evening, and I'll try to give them some advice, some direction, that helps everybody work best together so we all get the most time on stage. And so I've got a handful of tips that I'll pass on to the band. One is that that stage has two stairwells on it, and one is only to be used for entering the stage, and the other is only to be used for exiting the stage. And I'll put some signage up by those stairs saying, you know, entry only, exit only. So that way everybody and all their equipment is always moving smoothly from one side of the stage to the other, and people aren't walking into each other so much or having collisions on the stairwell or struggling with that. And that makes things go faster and easier and safer. I'll ask the bands to make an effort to have consistent back lines. I know this isn't always possible, but if it is possible, if we can keep the bass guitar amplifiers in the same spot on the stage, and the guitar is in the same spot, roughly. The drums usually are stage center, so that's usually no issue. That way, all of our feed lines and microphones that go to those instruments don't have to move around too much from one act to the next, and that saves us time. Another thing is nobody should be on stage that isn't actively doing something. So as you're tearing down your rig, there's no reason to have your girlfriend or best buddy up there just sitting there kibitzing. Uh, the only people who should be on stage are the musicians and the roadies who are actually moving gear in or out. When you pack up your gear, the order of packing should be to pack up guitars and delicate instruments and get them in their cases and off the stage. Uh, 
Don't just put them on a stand and set them aside because I want all of that delicate gear to be moved out of the way so there's less opportunity for somebody to trip over it, damage equipment, get things banged up. So pack up all the guitars and stuff, put them in the case, get the case off the stage. Then pack up the wiring and get it off the stage and then get the amplifiers off. And so by following that order, we tend to move things out most quickly with the least potential of damaging anybody's expensive gear. I ask people to please not move microphones or cables around too much. If there's a feed cable that's on stage left, that's where I'm going to expect it to be when the next act comes up. And if I have to run around the stage and play Find the Weasel, that wastes time. And uh, it also means that I need to move around more, more likely I'm tripping over other people. And so that doesn't help. So try not to move the signal lines of the microphones too far from where they're placed. Or if you do, it sure would be nice if you'd put them back roughly in the location where they started from. I ask people to try not to bring liquids or other debris like your meal up on stage. Because the more stuff we bring up on stage, the more stuff we have to clear off. And liquids always make me a little tiny bit nervous because liquids can be spilled. And I don't want to see liquids spilled into anybody's equipment or my equipment. So I try to minimize the amount of junk that's on stage. I ask bands to respect their set times. This is a normal request, but in these kind of events, it's especially important that we don't run over time because if you run over time, that cuts into the time for the next act, and that's just not really respectful. Um, and also, of course, general sound guy advice is to play at a moderate level because if somebody's on stage playing really loud, making a lot of volume on stage, that's hard to deal with as a sound guy to wrap the rest of the band around them with the PA when you don't have control over the equalization or the level of a particular instrument. And so it makes for a better show for the audience if everybody on stage plays moderately, plays as quietly as they can, but no quieter, and lets the PA do the heavy lifting. And of course, as always, one of the most important things is don't get hurt. Be careful. I remember a show years ago where um, it was a country act and there was a fiddle player and he was an amazing fiddle player. And uh, he was an older guy. He must have been in his 70s. And he does a fiddle solo. He's got a wireless fiddle. It's kind of cool. And he starts just running from one side of the stage to the other side of the stage. And uh, then he takes a flying leap and jumps on top of our speaker columns on uh, one of our columns. And I remember sitting back there going, oh my goodness, dude. It's like, I hadn't secured those things down to take that kind of impact. And I was hoping that everything would hang together, which it did. And I was worried for the guy because he's now 14 feet above gravel and thought, if you fall from there, it's going to be a bad day, dude. Um, but everything turned out fine, but that really made me nervous. And so be careful, because if somebody gets hurt, well, that's really going to put a kink in the show, and and that doesn't work good for anybody, of course. Now, as the sound guy, there are things that I do to make my life a lot easier, too, in these events. And so one of those is that everything that's on stage, all of the mics, all the cables... I put a little label, usually I just use something like um, some masking tape, down on the connector that goes into the microphone. I try to keep it inconspicuous, but I label what every cable is on stage, because things do end up getting moved around, and if I have some unlabeled cable lying in the middle of the stage and I don't know where it goes, well, that's going to take me extra time to figure out, and I'd rather not be wasting that time. And so all of my mics, I'll probably just put a label on them uh, for vocals. might be like V1 through V5 for my five vocal mics. For guitars, I'll put a label on there that would be like G1 through G3. G1, G2, G3 for the three different guitar mics. Obviously, the drum kit's going to have its mics, which would be K for kick and S for snare. 
And then I usually just do T1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for all the toms and so forth and so on. So I can grab any cable and it's got a little label on it that says who it's supposed to go to. Because I find that during these shows, it's not that uncommon that somebody moves something from one side of the stage to the other, or the various vocal microphones get rearranged in their order. And I don't want to be guessing as to who's on what fader when I'm mixing the band. The other thing that I do is I, I try to get an advance from the bands as to what their input lists are going to be. And sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But I try to set up enough channels and groups on my mixer that I can handle the most demanding band of the night. So all of my vocals are grouped together on a group of faders that are all vocals. And then I have the guitars, which are that block of faders. It's not a big deal. You know, I, we can handle it any way it goes down, but it's just a little bit more sane to me. If all of my drums are in one, one spot on the board, all my vocals are on another spot of the board, and so forth. And so if the one of the bands in the group of, of bands who are playing that night need six vocals, I'll reserve six channels for vocals so I can have all of them together on the board. Just makes it a little more sane to mix. If I have the opportunity... I'll ask each of the bands before the show to get up and give me a quick sound check. And this makes everybody more comfortable. And it allows me the opportunity to save each of those sound checks as a scene on the digital mixer. So that's cool if I can do it, because then when that act comes up, I can just hit recall scene and everything, boom, comes back as it was at sound check. And that makes kicking off their set super slick and easy. But even if that doesn't happen, it's not a major deal because, you know, we're experienced. We can handle minor changes from one band to another. Most people's levels aren't that far different. So the levels that I had set up for the drum kit on the previous set are probably going to be pretty close to the same ballpark for the next upcoming drummer. And same thing for vocals and so on. Uh, the one part where I do tend to watch it a little bit is on direct outputs. Direct outputs from keyboards or bass guitar because they can vary quite a bit. So I like to do a quick line check before that band actually gets started, especially on those inputs. And I also walk around and just tap each of the microphones to make sure that everything's still working for the next act. One of the things that makes this super slick and easy with the digital board is the ability to have a remote tablet, uh, to be able to mix the band on an iPad or a tablet and have a remote connection back to the board. Because that way, I can stand on stage, check the monitors, and if anything needs to be tweaked, I can do it right there and then, and I can really hear the impact of the changes I'm making in real time. And I can just walk around to each of the microphones with a, a pencil or something and tap the microphone and make sure that I've got signal in every single channel. And that gives me a much more relaxed, peace of mind feeling, knowing that well, at least the PA system is working. A big part of this whole thing is mindset. And if you run around and you're frantic and trying to get things done fast, you can create a really stressful environment. And stress is something that i try to avoid in my shows i want my shows to be fun and easy and smooth and low drama and the approach that i take that works best for me is not to worry so much about speed but to worry about smoothness so i try to just focus on one thing at a time i try not to let people distract me with other issues while i'm working on the issue that i'm focused on and then I'll move on to the next one. Because I find that I just can't multitask as effectively as if I work just on one thing at a time. And I try to do it smooth and complete. And always be moving. And I find that if I focus on always being productive and moving and doing things in a smooth, methodical manner... It ends up being the fastest way to do things. If I scurry around and I'm worried about getting it done fast, and i got to get it done fast, those are the times when I am most likely to overlook something 
or to make a mistake. And if I make a mistake or plug something into the wrong connector somewhere, then I have a troubleshooting episode. And I have to figure out what happened and how to resolve it. And that whole process ends up wasting time. So it's better to do it right the first time than to do it quickly, make a mistake, and then have to fix a mistake. And I find that one mistake can really be a setback that overcomes the effort of trying to do things fast. And of course, the goal is to have a good time. So whatever happens, don't make a deal, just resolve it and make sure that everybody has a good time, everybody's safe, it's low drama, and we all get paid. And so with that, I hope that your festival shows go as smooth and easy and fun as mine. And I hope you have a great summer season coming up with lots of good shows because I want you to sound great. Well, my name is Barry. I'm a sound engineer in the Minnesota area. And I hope you enjoy the content. And if you do, I'd encourage you to subscribe. If you subscribe and hit that bell icon, YouTube may notify you <laughs> when new content comes down so you don't miss anything good. Um, and if you like the content, I'd also appreciate it if you'd take a second and go down there and click the like button because that way it strokes my ego and it notifies YouTube that this content is appreciated by the audience and YouTube may be encouraged to share this information with a wider audience so more people can benefit. Thanks for sticking around. I hope to see you again on another upcoming episode of Sound Advice.